Tragic as hell. Um, he had cleaned his life up and was sober at that time and was trying to do stuff like direct and actually make a legitimate name for himself and not just be wild thing anymore. And he was killed by a drunk driver. That, that is really sad. And yeah. Very unfortunate. Uh, a couple years later, in 1994, John Candy was up next. Uh, you mm -hmm. may have heard of him being involved with the Confederacy of Dunces. <laughs> and he died right before filming of a heart attack at 43 years old. A little young for a heart attack, but it does happen. Again, that kind of lifestyle of Hollywood may lead you to not take the best care of your physical health. Yeah. Again, in 1997, Chris Farley was approached for the role. Oh, wow. And his role model was John Belushi. So knowing this was an intended role for him, he eagerly accepted it. Mm. Shortly after reading the script, he was dead of an overdose at 33 years old. Shoo. In a similar manner to John Belushi. So those were people who were supposed to play the lead roles of a took that were affected by this curse, but there's a theory that it actually spread to people who read the script but were not supposed to be in that role. Oh, really? Yes, almost like a, the ring where you can't show the videotape to anyone. Mm. You, you show the script to somebody and then they die. Oh, I actually have a movie like that too that I wanted to bring up in a minute. We'll get to that okay, later. A little teaser there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 19, so we're backtracking a little bit, obviously. In 1994, when John Candy was attached to the film, he passed the script to a friend, Michael O'Donohue, thinking maybe he could join the cast. Later that year, O'Donohue died of a cerebral hemorrhage at 54 years old. Wow. So, again, not unheard of, but still kind of young for a major... Uh, health ailment. Farley also shared the script with a comedic actor pal. You may have heard of him, Phil Hartman. Oh, man. Five months after Farley's death, Hartman was shot to death by his wife shortly before taking her own life. That blinded a lot of people, and it was very tragic. The only thing that I, I think I can say about that is when you talk to or when you listen to people like David Foley and Joe Rogan talk, they were not surprised that that Phil Hartman's wife did that to him. Apparently, that it wasn't a surprise to anybody who knew him, which is a real shame. Yeah, very um, very sad situation. Luckily, their children weren't harmed during it. But that can't be easy to have to grow up after being present in a home after something like that happened and having your family ripped apart. So, mm. you know, we're, we're also, we're making, we're making reaches saying that other people who happened to read the script befell untimely deaths. But mm. it's also, it's something to consider. Yeah, and I guess... Our angle on this is it's fun to make these conclusions, but yeah, we are probably making some conclusions that aren't there, or reciting some conclusions other people have made that might not be there. Yeah, like with this, this movie is now, it's been just indefinitely on hold, doesn't seem like anything's happening with it, it's kind of in a film purgatory. Good, I don't want it to kill any more of my favorite actors. You almost think like is it on hold due to the curse or is it on hold due to the big example of Hollywood racism uh, putting all these white male actors in the role of an Inuit traveler yeah I think that would be really hard to do right now in, in this day and age or I mean I guess what, what's interesting to me about that is if you are looking to those comedy geniuses to play the role, I guess maybe it was supposed to be a little satirical or sardonic, you know? 
kind of making fun of like John Wayne in The Conqueror, or at least I hope. <laughs> I see that. I also see in the early '90s there was probably a lot of leeway is taken with commercial comedy that I think are kind of done under a different lens now with a little more diversity. Yeah, that's fair. And you could also salvage this movie with more uh, inclusion in the roles as well, as long as it's not cursed. As long as it's not actually cursed. I think we need a version with the Wayne's brothers. <laughs> I don't know why, but when you were talking, I thought of white chicks as like the oh, okay, the, the <laughs> antithesis of of that, and that's where my mind went. Sorry. Um, so, um, do you have any guess on what film is considered the scariest movie ever? And it's a it's a popular poll, so. So you mean just like fictional movie? Like not over, not based on curses or anything. Just scariest movie that people viewed. I'm not going to say this is my choice, but I believe the popular choice is The Exorcist. Later. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, no, it was even later, and the the way the study used to determine this measured participants' heart rates throughout over 100 hours of scary movies. And they found that Sinister was the scariest movie ever. And that's... Sinister? Yeah. That's according to Broadband Choices. From what I remember, that's a pretty creepy movie. I believe I did see that. So something I'm realizing we failed to mention here in that genre and around the same time as Sinister is Annabelle and the Conjuring and they almost you could do a an entire podcast in and of itself of the creepy things that happened on set with those movies do you have any guess on the deadliest movie ever made I, I so deadliest is in people who watch the movie or... Yeah, this supposedly claimed the lives of 86 people who watched it. The filmmakers say it's cursed and resulted in two major tragedies at screenings. I, I really have no idea. It just kind of sounds made up, right? Either way. It, uh, it, it seems like it'd be hard to quantify that. Yeah. The movie is called Antrim. Want to watch it tonight? Sure. Put it on the list. Thank you so much for coming on the pod today and for all your excellent research and insights. Thanks for having me. Ah, I had a great time. We have a trip coming up where we're going to visit Braxton County, the location of the Flatwoods Monster Encounter, and Point Pleasant in the Mothman Museum. I think we'll have to do a follow-up podcast when we get back. Yeah, that would be awesome. We can talk about the... Flatwoods monster is a owl in a trench coat, or if there's something else spooky going on there. Is that your guess? Yes, maybe three owls in a trench coat. I'm kind of hoping you're right. What do you think, DJ Meow Mix? Exactly. Agreed. Thank you. Good night. Mm-hmm.